Hello everyone, how are you? Welcome again to our YouTube channel, Engineers World. In the previous lecture, we gave an introduction on compass surveying in which we discussed about uh, bearings and various types of bearings. Now from uh, today onwards in, and in today's lecture, we will start with designation of bearings. So our topic today is designation of bearings. So, the bearing of a line can be designated in the following two systems. So, those systems are, first one is whole circle bearing, bearing system. And second one is quadrantal bearing system. whole circle bearing system this is WCB in short and this is QB so we will be discussing both these systems one by one so starting with the whole circle bearing see in whole circle bearing system the bearing of the line is measured clockwise from the north end of the reference meridian thus the whole circle bearing of a line is the horizontal angle which the line makes with the north end of the reference meridian. So the direction of the line is indicated by an arrow. The reference meridian is generally shown as a vertical line with its north and towards the top of the paper. So if I make it like this, if this is our north, this is our south. So, for example, this is our bearing OA. This is our, uh, sorry, line OA. So, if we take the bearing of the line with respect to north end, for example, we are taking the bearing with respect to north. So then, this bearing will be called as whole circle bearing. Similarly, we can have line in different, different quadrants and in all the quadrants we will be taking reference as north in no way we will take the reference as south so the whole circle bearing of a line may vary from 0 degree to 360 degree see in this figure if I designate the whole circle bearings of lines see this is if this is OA this is OB OC, OD. So for line OA, it can be simply written as 45 degree. For line OB, it can be written as 150 degree. For line OC, this can be written as 240 degree. And for line OD, it can be 330 degree. So these are all the whole circle bearings. Now moving on to the next, that is quadrantal bearing system see the quadrantal quadrantal bearing of a system bearing system of a line is the acute angle which the line makes with the meridian thus the quadrantal bearing is measured from the north point or the south point whichever is the nearer see if this is a quadrant system this is north this is south if this is a line OA and this is another line OB this is OC and this is OD so the quadrantal bearing of a line cannot be greater than 90 degree you have to remember so but in the quadrantal bearing system, we make the use of letters N, E, S, W, which represent North, East, South and West respectively. So for complete designation of the quadrantal bearing, the quadrant in which the line lies must be mentioned. 
while writing the quadrantal bearing. So firstly we have to write uh, north or south then we have to write the angle between the angle with respect to north or with respect to south and we have to uh, then write as last letter E east or west. For example in this case uh, for line OA our bearing can be uh, uh, see this angle is 45 degree so our bearing can be quadrantal bearing in quadrantal system bearing can be written as north 45 degree east see because uh, this uh, lies in first quadrant and in first quadrant north and lies nearer so we wrote n and the angle is 45 degree and it is in eastern direction so north 45 degree east similarly OB will be south 30 degree east if uh, this is our 30 degree so it can be written as south 30 degree east similarly because here reference is now south similarly for line OC it is if this angle is 60 degree the quadrantal in quadrant system the bearing will be south 60 degree west similarly for line OD for line OD if this is 30 degree so in quadrantal system it will be north 30 degree west so this was all about the designation of the bearings by using whole circle bearing system or quadrantal bearing system now uh, moving to the next topic that is or fore bearing and back bearing now what is fore bearing and what is back bearing we will discuss it one by one so our next topic is fore bearing and back bearing Now what is four bearing? See, any straight line has two diametrically opposite directions depending upon the direction of the arrow. The bearing of the line in the direction of the progress of a survey is called four bearing. And the bearing of the line in the direction opposite to the direction of progress of survey is called back bearing. For example, this is our line AB. If for point A this is north and for point B this is north. If we consider this is 80 degree with respect to north at point A in the progress of survey. So this 80 degree will be called as four bearing represented by FB. So four bearing of AB will be written as 80 degree. Now here is also uh, the bearing of line in a direction opposite to the direction of arrow. See this is the uh, direction of arrow so opposite to the direction of arrow will be this and this will be 260 degree. Why it will be 260 degree? Because four bearing plus back bearing is equal to 360 degree no oh, sorry not 360 here, here, here it is, he has mentioned as 260 degree so in this case back bearing will be 260 degree now to avoid confusion the arrow should be marked to indicate the direction of the progress of survey like I have marked here now the bearing of the line AB measured from A towards the forward station B is called the forebearing of the line AB. Bearing of a line AB measured from A towards forward direction, forward station B is called as forebearing of the line AB, assuming that the progress of survey is from A to B. 
Now the bearing of the line AB measured from B towards the rear station A is called the back bearing or the reverse bearing of line AB. So the fore bearing of the line AB here is 80 degree whereas the back bearing of the line AB is 260 degree. So this is all about what is fore bearing and what is back bearing. Now uh, we will move on to the determination of back bearing from fore bearing. See, here I will write a formula. Here are two formulas. I will write back bearing by BB. See, BB or back bearing of a line, let, it, let here be back bearing of AB, will be equal to fore bearing of AB, FB of AB plus 180 degree if fore bearing is less than this is a condition if fore bearing is less than 80 degree uh, sorry less than 180 degree see in our case fore bearing is 80 degree that is less than 180 degree so back bearing can be simply written as fore bearing that is 80 plus 180 that comes out to be 260 degree so this is a formula 1 for calculation of back bearing from fore bearings now, what if forbearing of line is greater than 180? So in that case, the formula becomes back bearing of a line, let it be AB. Forbearing of line minus 180 degree. So this is the case if forbearing will be greater than 180 degree. So in this way we can calculate the back bearing of a line of the same line by using the forbearing of the by using the value of forbearing. But this these two formulas are used exclusively in case of whole circle bearing system. But in case of uh, um, quadrantal bearing, if the forbearing of a line is given then back bearing is numerically equal to fore bearing see these two formulas work work only for whole circle bearing but for uh, quadrantal system in quadrantal bearing the value of uh, fore bearing and back bearing are numerically equal uh, but we have to change north for south and vice versa and east for west and vice versa for example uh, we have fore bearing of north 30 degree east then its back bearing will be south 30 degree west so in this way we can uh, calculate the back bearings in case of quadrantal bearing system also now uh, Next, we will be solving some questions on these. Now, uh, the question says, convert the following whole circle bearings to quadrantal bearings. So, we have to convert whole circle bearings to quadrantal bearing. First part is 20 degree. So this is a bearing which is given in whole circle bearing. So this is basically 20 degree if this is line OA. This is with respect to north. So and this is our east. If we want to convert into whole, uh, quadrantal bearing, so its quadrantal bearing will be simply north 20 degree east. Similarly, uh, second is uh, 150 degree for 150 degree. This is given in whole circle bearing. So 150 degree lies somewhat here. Let it be OB. See in whole circle bearing, this 150 degree is with respect to north. But in quadrantal system, as it lies in fourth quadrant, its nearest end is south end. So we will calculate this angle. So this angle will be 180 degree minus 150, 
थर्टी डिग्री सो इन क्वारंटल बेयरिंग सिस्टम और दिस बेयरिंग विल बी साउथ थर्टी डिग्री ईस्ट सो इन दिस वे वी कैन कन्वर्ट होल सर्कल बेयरिंग टू क्वारंटल बेयरिंग नाउ नेक्स्ट टाइप ऑफ प्रॉब्लम आर क्वारंटल बेयरिंग सिस्टम टू होल सर्कल नाउ वी हैव टू कन्वर्ट क्वारंटल बेयरिंग सिस्टम टू होल सर्कल बेयरिंग सिस्टम सो द क्वेश्चन सेज कन्वर्ट द फॉलोइंग क्वारंटल बेयरिंग्स टू होल सर्कल बेयरिंग्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल फर्स्ट पार्ट इज नॉर्थ ट्वेंटी फाइव ट्वेंटी फाइव डिग्री थर्टी मिनट वेस्ट सी वी हैव टू कन्वर्ट दिस टू वी हैव टू कन्वर्ट दिस इन टू होल सर्कल बेरिंग सो वी नीड टू ड्रॉ दिस दिस इज आवर नॉर्थ एंड दिस इज आवर वेस्ट सो विद रिस्पेक्ट टू वेस्ट this is let it be oa and this angle is or 25 degree 30 minute so if we convert it into whole circle bearing the angle will be whole clockwise so we have to calculate this type of this value of angle so this will be simply 360 degree minus 25 degree and 30 minutes so in wcb the bearing will be 360 degree minus 25 degree 30 minute and that value comes out to be 334 degree 30 minutes similarly the second part says north 30 degree 30 minute east so if i draw it here this is north this is east With respect to north, if this is O, this is A. This is thirty degree, thirty minute. So, as this is clockwise and this is with respect to north, so in this case our whole circle bearing will be numerically same to this quadrantal bearing. So our WCB will be simply thirty degree, thirty minutes. So these were some of the questions. related to conversion of whole circle bearing to quadrantal bearing and quadrantal bearing to whole circle bearing now let's move on to the next topic that is interesting one that is magnetic dip so what do we mean by magnetic dip see a perfectly balanced needle after magnetization will dip towards north in the northern hemisphere in the southern hemisphere it will dip downwards towards uh, it will dip towards south so that means in northern hemisphere the perfectly balanced needle after magnetization will dip towards north and in southern hemisphere it will dip, dip towards south if it is taken to be pole of the earth the needle will take vertical position the vertical angle between the horizontal of the point at a point and the direction shown by perfectly balanced needle is known as dip so if i uh, write the definition it can be defined as the vertical angle so vertical angle between the horizontal at a point horizontal at a point and the direction shown by
שום בעיה. פרפקטלי בלנס נידל. is called dip or magnetic dip see it varies from point to point at equator magnetic tip is 0 degree and at poles it is that too at magnetic poles the value of this tip is 90 degree so this is all about magnetic dip. Now the next is uh, magnetic declination. So what do we mean by magnetic declination? See, the magnetic meridian and the true meridian may not coincide with each other in many places. So the horizontal angle between these two meridians is known as magnetic meridian. So it is known as magnetic declination, sorry. So what is magnetic declination? The horizontal angle between the magnetic meridian and the true meridian may be called as magnetic declination see if the north end of the magnetic needle is to the east of the true declination then the magnetic meridian is said to be eastern or positive and if the north end of the needle is towards the west of the true meridian it is said to be western or negative declination see magnetic declination also varies from time to time and also from place to place to find it true meridian is to be established from astronomical observation and magnetic meridian from observing a compass see if I show you the eastern and western declination see if this is our true meridian and our magnetic is to magnetic meridian is to the west sorry is to east of the true meridian so this declination is called as eastern declination or positive declination similarly if our magnetic meridian is declined to the west of true meridian then this declination is western declination and also also called as negative declination western declination or negative declination so now here comes the concept of isogonic charts what are those to help the user standard agencies conduct astronomical surveys and publish isogonic charts from which magnetic declination at any point can be found in India the agency is the survey of India the charts show isogonic lines and agonic lines now what are isogonic and agonic lines isogonic agonic
what are isogonic lines the lines passing through the points at which declination is the same at given time at given time the line passing through the points through the points at which declination is same at a given time same at a given time may be called as isogonic lines and the lines joining points of zero declination are called agonic lines the line joining points of zero declination are called as agonic lines so this was the difference between isogonic lines as well as agonic lines now the isogonic lines do not form complete great circles they radiate from the south and north magnetic region and they are quite irregular near geographical poles now there are usually four types of variations in declinations that have been identified now we'll talk about variations variations there are four types of variations first is secular variation second one is annual variation third one is daily variation and the last one is irregular variations now i'll briefly explain one by one what is secular variation the magnetic meridian swings like a pendulum to the left and to the right of true meridian its period of oscillation is approximately 250 years so this may be called as secular variation what the magnetic meridian swings like a pendulum to the left and to the right of the true meridian so its period of oscillation is approximately 250 years now what is annual variation it is observed that in a year the declination declination changes from 1 minute to 2 minute from its mean position so in a year the declination changes from 1 minute to 2 minute from its mean position so this may be called as annual variation what is daily variation there is daily variation also in the declination it is as much as 10 minutes the extent of variation depends on the following factors what are those factors daily variation it is more near magnetic poles and less near equator daily variation is more in summer and less in winter it is more in day and less in night the amount of variation changes from year to year see the daily variation is also known as diurnal variation so this type of variation is very important because this diurnal variation is more near magnetic poles less near equator it is more during summer and less during winters more during day and less during night so its variation is uh, in very short span of time and it's all it also changes from year to year now what is irregular variation magnetic storms occur due to earthquakes and volcanic eruptions due to earthquakes 
and volcanic eruptions magnetic storms occur it results into changes in magnetic meridian such changes are up to 1 degree to 2 degree so this is called as irregular variation so these were the types of variations and hope you all must have got it so this was all about today's lecture hope you would have enjoyed today's lecture